miracle in our mouth, a miracle in our word. This is Faith and Hope with Charity, you guys. That was my grandfather evangelist, Roy Castro, song. I thank you for joining me here today. I'm kind of a little excited about the word the Lord is going to bring forth today because, you know, you always kind of try to plan for it, but this morning he woke me up and he took me into Acts, and, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go to Acts chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles or your smartphones and you follow along with the word that way, um, go ahead and pull up Acts chapter 8, um, and we will go through that, and, and I will share with you what the Lord has shown me to share with you guys. Also, um, follow along with the blog at keepingfaithinyourears.com. That's keepingfaithinyourears.com, and then jamforjesus.org. That website there, jamforjesus.org, is going to list any functions that are going on, revivals that are going on. Um, it, it, there's pictures, there's videos, there's also a button there that you can click and, and donate to the ministry as we go forth and try to help those who are in need because that's what we're called to do is love one another and help those who are less fortunate than us and so we do dinners for the homeless my grandfather travels into Texas and Mexico and he takes food to children we get I think a whole dumpster um, I say dumpster but a whole trailer full of, of food that children are eating out of dumpsters down there and, and they get a whole trailer for like I think it's 450 now it used to be 400 and then we give them bibles and whatever it is that we can do to help we go wherever the lord has called us amen so uh, just pray about it and if the lord moves on you to plant that extra seed um, go ahead and click on the button and, and do your donation there or you can contact me or allpointstv.com at any time my phone number is 810-449-2247 and then my grandfather um, who i'm partners with in the ministry is 810-569 10 21 and you can call us for prayer at any time or if you have a testimony or something that you want to share you can do that as well so i'm going to get right into the word you guys i'm going to try to get through this today <clears throat> i was probably i don't know i think it was three and a half hours he woke me up about six o'clock this morning i think i finally started getting in the word around 6 30 or so and i didn't get done until about 9 30. so i'm going to try to get through it faster than that for you guys because when when he gives me stuff i, I have to sit and pray about it and, and, and write down what what he's leading and guiding me to share with everybody. And because he gives light to his word, he gives us the understanding, amen? He gives us all truths. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is in Acts 8. And, and a question I wanna ask everybody is, um, is Satan against religion? That's, a, you know, answer it in yourself right now. Is Satan against religion? Some say true, some say false, but the answer is false. <laughs> Satan is not against religion. It's actually one of his chief tricks that he's going to use. It's, it's one of the chief in the bag of his tricks that he's going to use is religion itself. And in Acts 8, we're given a true, pure example of that and how he did it. So when we actually study the Bible, we, we will also see that the very first temptation that was in the Garden of Eden, it, it was a, a religious, like spiritual temptation. How so? Is that what you're thinking? How so? Because it was a temptation not to be ungodly, but to be godly. What did the serpent say to Eve? If you do this, you will be like God. Think about that. If you do this, you will be like God. You will know all things. You will know good and evil. You will know. So the, that's the very first temptation. It wasn't a temptation to fall down. It was a temptation to climb up. To take glory upon yourself. See, when we get into spiritual truths and we start seeing things, it's, it was the temptation to be as God. That was the temptation that the serpent brought to Eve. That was the temptation. Amen. So we're going to get into the word because there was a revival going on in Samaria in, in chapter 8 in Acts. And, and we're going to read about it and we're going to go through it and we're going to see the truth of God's word and, and what he's showing us through this. So I'm going to read Acts chapter 8, 
five through eight right now. We'll do five through eight, and then we'll touch on some stuff that's going on and, and what we need to see and learn and understand from it. Amen? So Acts chapter eight, verse five, and I'm going to read it. It says, then Philip, because they were going out and preaching the word of God and doing the revivals and bringing the truth to the people, right? It says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. They were possessed with them because the spirit goes in the, the body. You have a spirit in your body. Think about this. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. That's an important word for us to, to see there, that they were healed. And we'll talk about that in a minute and why that's important. You know, one word is so important. And there was great joy in that city. Great joy joy what happens in revivals when we see the truth great joy right because there's always joy when jesus is present always there's always joy when jesus is is present and involved in it I mean, it's joy unspeakable and it's full of glory and grace and love always because god is love he sheds forth it abroad amen so now let's look at verse 9, and we want to see here how the subject changes, okay? Because it starts with the word but. It starts with the word but. It says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the very same city where this revival was going on, he used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself, Simon himself, was some great one. Was some great one. Because you know, when God opens the windows of heaven to bless, the devil's coming immediately trying to blast us, trying to take away the joy, trying to take away grace, trying to take away peace, trying to take away the truth of God, right? So whenever there's a revival, you can expect satanic opposition. You can expect it. The word of God shows us over and over and over about the tribulations and the trials and that as soon as you get a word of God, the enemy comes trying to take it away. He's coming and, he, and he's trying to take it away. So we, we know wherever there's a revival, there's going to be, because you've got to think about this, a revival, God's power is moving. He's healing his people that there's gonna be satanic opposition coming. So let's finish reading. So I read you verse nine of some great one. We're gonna go all the way to verse 13 right now. It says, to whom they all, all of those in the city of Samaria had gave heed. They gave heed from the least unto the greatest. So it wasn't just, a, it was they all had given heed unto this man, Simon with his sorcery and his witchcraft, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of long time, a long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding, beholding means seeing, the miracles and signs which were done. Now, if we look at all of that of what we just read, we were just shown counterfeit Christianity, counterfeit. That's what Simon had done before when he bewitched all the people, it was counterfeit. So we have to really get into the word and we have to study this because when God moves, the enemy's moving also. 
Satan, he, he tried to, to pose the church from the outside, so now he's trying to pose the church from the inside, which is what Simon did. They all had given heed to Simon before Philip came. And he, and he does it with many avenues, like superficial saints. You can look at uh, Ananias and Sapphira, or Sapphira, however you say her name. This is, you know, the enemy's coming, and he has power. He has miracle signs and wonders. And here we see him doing it with counterfeit religion, and they all had given heed unto him as if he was. Now, let's go back up there because it says that this man is the great power of God. They'd seen miracles, wonders, and powers, but they weren't the true power. See, this is what we're going to learn in here. The devil, he is a counterfeit, and what he does, rather than to deny the faith and the truth, he counterfeits the faith, but that's doubly dangerous. Because then you're messing around with spirits of demons and of devils. This is why it's important that we study the word of God ourselves. That we let his spirit get on the inside of us. So we don't follow false faith. So we got to think of this. If you live for God and the truth of Christ, are you going to have opposition? If we live for God and the truth of Christ, knowing what's in this world, are we going to have opposition? Whether, whether it's as an individual, as a person, as it attacks your faith or whatever, or whether it's as a congregation or a church gathered together. Yes, you are. The Word of God shows us over and over that we are. And if you have never even, if you have never met the devil... It's because you and the devil are going in the same direction. If you've never met him, because opposition will come when you stand on the truth of God in Jesus Christ. He says it will. Tribulation and opposition will come. And it's not saying that, that the, the enemy is right there, but if you have never met him, then you're walking in the same way he is because he's not going to come at somebody that's walking the same way he is. We've got to start speaking truth. We cannot fear. This is what Jesus came for to show us that we have eternal life through him. And we don't have to fear what man say or do unto us. We can speak the truth boldly. Shouting it. Amen. He is the accuser of the brethren. That's who Satan is. That's who the enemy is. The accuser of the brethren. He brings accusation against you. So if you haven't faced opposition, then you're not standing in true grace. But the faith that we have of Jesus Christ defeats all darts. And we already have the victory. Amen. So, there, so let's look again. There's great joy going on in this city. But we're told here of what's going on before Philip came and preached. And that's what we're trying to see because don't think it's not still in the world today because it is. Counterfeit Christianity, Christ, the true spirit of God is dangerous and it is very real. We are a spiritual being in a carnal body. There is a supernatural there is eternal life. Amen? No, we can't fully understand God. He tells us that. Think about the transgression there back in Adam and Eve. What were they trying to do? Trying to climb up. Trying to be as God. So we're likened in his image, which means a carbon like copy. We're not exact as he is, as Jesus Christ was. The exact express image of God, we're told in the word, is Jesus Christ. This is how we know that this was the fullness of God's spirit. It was the express image. And express means exact. He was 
the Spirit of God in the fullness in the flesh, bringing forth the truth for us because for a long time this city was bewitched by sorcery. He says, I've given power unto you. Do we speak and claim and God moves? Amen. So we can't be deceived or amazed by satanic forces and false religion. We can't. There's many, many false religions and things that are going on. They cut heads off of animals and bats and things. And, and they see actual powers and wonders going on. They don't understand it. And that's why they follow it. And this is why we have to stand up. We have to start speaking the truth so that people turn back on to the true and one and only God. Because Paul's preaching there, it had great force. It had great force. And verse 10 says, they thought that that man Simon was the great power of God. They thought he was. That's God's grace. He brought forth truth peace and grace to us but we got to notice in verse 9 uh, that, that man Simon which was before time he used sorcery and he bewitched the people to whom they all gave great heed listening to I'm going to explain to you what heed means listened to had regard for and paid attention to so they followed him from the least to the greatest saying before time that this man is the great power of God. So they seen the powers and miracles and signs and wonders that were going on. And sorcery is just another word for witchcraft. See, when you look back in, in Greek and Hebrew and we start understanding how it's spoken and how their words are used, that one word can have a few different meanings in it. They usually line up close to the same, but can just kind of veer off a little bit one way or the other. But sorcery is witchcraft, and supernatural is real. It's real. Which, by the way, it's still working in the world today. He tells you by that Antichrist that will come, but that is already working in the world. And it is still working in the world today. Still. And it's in many churches. Because I just explained to you at the beginning that Satan's going to use religion and false faith to deceive many. They're going to be bewitched by the miracles and signs that he's doing. But glory be to God, we now have the truth. Philip brought the truth. Glory to God and preach the truth of Jesus Christ and brought forth the true power of God. Because remember that word I said, healed. That's an important word. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this is, we've got to be able to discern between lying spirits with power and the true spirit and power of God. And if we don't know, then we will be deceived. He tells us in the word. We will. If we don't know. Amen. So many, many people are deceived and dazzled by when they see supernatural things going on around them or, or uh, I don't even know what the religion is. Um, I believe it was somewhere in Africa years ago and they still practice it today and they actually see <laughs> things going on and they feel things. But they're not from God. They don't understand it, so, but they follow it because they see it's real, Right? So we have to recognize what supernatural power is at work. And this is why he says to try every spirit. And I believe that's in Corinthians. Um, let me see here. I have it written down for you guys somewhere. But that he says, try ye every spirit. You have to know them. You can't just trust it because it's, it's showing you something supernatural. You, you, you have to try it. And that's, oh, actually, it's in 1 John 4. That's in 1 John 4. It says, believe not every spirit. Try them. Try means to test, discern, and examine. Because false prophets are even now already in the world. 
These spirits are real. Their effects are real. Their control over your mind and in your life can be devastating. Devastating. It can keep you down in fear, keep you down in guilt. It steals the peace, the joy that God has for you. Steals it. And we have to recognize and we have to discern and test them. Amen? Because the Antichrist, the, the Satan, is soon about to come on the scene. All we have to do is look around us. Jesus told us, watch, be sober. You can discern the weather. Look at the times. What do we see? Men marrying men, women marrying women, people going away from the truth of God over and over and over, and the government supporting it. God says it's wrong. It's not from me. It's not from somebody else. If they say it, God says it's wrong. Where would humanity be if that's how we are supposed to be? He teaches us and tells us things for our own good. It's our job to be obedient because the sacrifice was already made. You want peace? You want love? You want that joy every day where you're dancing around and, and, and it's so overwhelming and you just feel so great? Walk in faith. Get in the word. Trust in him. Stop listening to the accuser. Try the spirits. Are they speaking the truth? Jesus Christ in the flesh because there's only one foundation one foundation that we can build on, and that is Jesus Christ crucified. If it's not built on that, then it is not the true power of God himself. It's the power of demonic and the devil. That's truth. Because he's about to soon come on the scene. And, and listen, because here we, he will be using sorcery and witchcraft trying to deceive the masses. And actually says he's going to deceive many. We've got to start opening our eyes. We've got to start trusting in God. We've got to get in the word. He says, believe not thine own eyes. Why does he tell us that in the Psalms? Because many are bewitched by it. We look at 2 Thessalonians 2.9. 2 Thessalonians 2.9. I'm going to read it real quick to you guys. 2 Thessalonians 2.9. It says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Speaks of the Antichrist. He's coming with all power, signs, and lying wonders. There's a difference. <laughs> lying wonders. Meaning miracles, supernatural things that are going to deceive many. Demonic forces on the earth. That's what it's telling us. Revelation 16, 14. Read it. It tells us de uh, demonic spirits will be leading the kings and rulers of this earth. And there will be supernatural signs and wonders. Don't get bewitched by them, this is what he's telling us. Because that whole city of Samara was bewitched by this man before Philip came. And then Simon believed himself. He seen the miracles, the powers, the, the people, uh, the spirits gone out of the people and they were healed. So he believed himself. But I want you to understand that his wasn't a true faith of belief. His wasn't a true faith in Jesus Christ. He was looking at the power and the miracles. And I'm going to explain that to you here in a second. Because we've already seen that... that um, People were demon-possessed demon in, in, in Samaria and where Philip came uh, for the revival, many, it says, many unclean spirits came out of people. So they were inside of them. Inside of them. There is a deadly demonic force in this world. Satan come to kill, steal, destroy. Jesus came so that I may that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And he heals you. 
It's already done 2,000 years ago. Amen? Think about it. Go all the way back even into the Old Testament. He says the former scriptures are for our learning so that we see. Because Pharaoh's magicians, they performed miracles when Moses did. Pharaoh's magicians, like Simon was a magician, committed sorcery, witchcraft. They performed miracles when Moses did the miracles of God. But he has overpowered them and defeated them and set the people free. Think about that. Overpowered them, delivered them, and set the people free and defeated the enemy. Simon couldn't deny. He believed. People were healed. See, if Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy, he's not going to heal you. He's not going to deliver you from an unclean spirit. Think about these things. Don't be deceived. If a magician comes or a soothsayer or an astrologer or a fortune teller and comes and does things that you don't understand, because we're clearly told in the word of God to flee from it. Do not participate in it. Do not call upon things that you do not understand. And this is how they trick us. You don't go trailing after them, seeking these soothsayers, these fortune tellers, these astrologers. Why are we told about them in the Bible? He warns us of them. Don't go trailing after them saying, I know it's real. Because that's the point. It is real. The supernatural is real. It is real. You don't understand it, but you don't go seeking after it just because you see that it's real. He tells you that demonic spirit is real. I explained last week about how we can see. People say there's no God. You can see good and evil in the world. You can look and actually see things going on, good and evil. He tells us that there are evil spirits and demonic going on. You can't see it and you don't fully understand it, but I'm telling you what to stay away from. Do not go see these soothsayers. Do not seek astrologers. Do not seek magicians. Do not seek fortune tellers. It's a demonic force led to deceive you, to get you to follow it, to go seek it as if it has all truths. As if it has all truths. God tells us don't follow it. God says to actually flee from it because it's, it's a half truth. They can't give you all truths. It gives you a half truth, half the power. Because when we understand that God created man and that there are spiritual beings that do have power. They do have power. Don't be misled by the power of false religion. By the power of these soothsayers and, and false tarot card readers and, and things like that. That's astrology. They, they put a sign, a, a card down with a, a picture of an animal or something on it. And, and they read your card. And they call upon the spirits. What spirits are they calling upon? Think about it. They've so glamorized it and people get so dazzled by it. What spirits are they calling upon? It's not the spirit of God in Jesus Christ. It's demonic. And he says, flee from it. Flee. Don't seek it. They, well, they can get on the inside of you. These people had to be delivered from unclean spirits. You've seen evil. How did, what, what do you think makes a man? Yeah, there was a guy in Florida who ate another man's face off. What would make him do that? 
He had an evil, demonic spirit on the inside of him. The supernatural is real. And we've got to start turning to God and listening to him. And stop following the lies. Amen. So, so now Simon had been using sorcery and rich, witchcraft, but verse 12 and 13 says, Then Simon believed himself also. Simon believed also. What did Simon believe? Because a lot of people say, oh, well, he was saved. And no, circumcision is of the heart. It's true belief and faith in God. Because miracle signs and wonders are sent forth. So you see the truth, you see the difference, and you turn back to God. And you seek him through the faith of Jesus Christ. It's important we understand that. Because when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding. Listen, because look at what he's looking at. We have to think here. We have to really study and meditate because it says beholding. He was following Philip, the man, sent forth, and he wondered, looking at, because beholding means to look. He didn't, he, he believed, and he didn't start looking where we're supposed to look, which is to God. He believed, beholding, looking to the miracles of and signs which were done to the miracles and signs which were done think about that are we, we we've got to spend time so that we understand these things i'm going to take a drink real quick sorry guys so he was looking to the wrong thing yes god will give miracle signs and wonders but he does this so that we see the difference and we look unto him and we don't follow these sorcerers and astrologers where that whole town had been following. Unclean spirits came out of many that were possessed with them. Many taking with palsies and that were lame were healed is what the scripture tells us. Many, they were healed because Jesus Christ heals. Amen. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So now let's go to verse 14, 16, or 14, 15, 16, and 17, because then they received the Holy Ghost. I'm going to try to get through this, you guys. Um, so we're going through 14 through 17. It says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to obtaining the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold on to the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epit. Oh, I'm in the wrong one, you guys. <laughs> That's pretty bad. So we're going back to Acts, I'm sorry. Acts 5. Either way, that's still good. We need to hold on to what we're taught. And we need to study in the word of God. So it says, Acts 5, 14. It says, And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both men and women. Both men and women were added. Both men and women. So Acts 8, verse 14, let's go there. Acts 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They weren't, they didn't receive the deceit anymore. They received the word of God. That's why he tells us, you have to receive my grace. You have to trust in me. You have to know that I've forgiven your past, present, and future and look unto me. Look unto me come back to me amen so then samaria received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy ghost for as yet he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus christ then laid they their hands on them and they received the holy ghost do you receive the Holy Ghost from a sorcerer? 
When you go and get a tarot card reading, can you receive the Holy Ghost? This, I mean, we've got to look at these things. He so, Satan so tricks us. And these false religions where you see supernatural powers acting, you can see it. You don't understand it. But when you know the truth, you try the spirits. You know it's not of God. You flee far from it. Amen. So verse 18 says, and when Simon saw that through, see, because he, he believed looking at the signs and wonders, and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered him money. He saw it. He wanted it. Wanted what? What did he want? Did he want grace? Did he want eternity? He wanted the miracle signs and wonders. We got to think about this. What was he? What did he do to the people? For a long time, he bewitched them. He believed in what he seen, and he wanted that power to be as God. The very first temptation to climb up to climb up. He tried to buy it. He tried to buy it. He was believing not in the master, but he was believing in the miracles. He wanted the power. He seen that power of God and he wanted it. He wanted to be as God. Now look at verse 21, because listen to what Philip said to him. We have to listen, because he said, Give me also that power that whomsoever I lay hands, they may receive the Holy Ghost. I, whom I lay hands. Think about these things. Because verse 21, Because Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Money is the root of all evil. Think about that. So verse 21 says, Thou has neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Neither part nor lot. Lot means portion. We are the portion. He's given us a portion. He's given us his cup. And he's telling Simon, right here, he says, Thou has neither part nor lot nor portion in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. He was not true. He was not true in his heart to God. He wanted the power. He wanted the miracle. He followed the miracle signs and wonders because he wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted. Do you see this? He wasn't right in the sight of God. He believed in Jesus Christ. Many people believe in Jesus Christ. But their hearts aren't right. They aren't looking unto God. So never put your faith in the miracles themselves that you see. Because the devil works miracles and wonders. He does. We're told that. You have to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In his Holy Spirit. The healing he brings. The healing to your heart. The joy, the peace that he gives you. Look at John 2, 23 through 24. John 2, 23 through 24. I'm going to try to get going a little fast here. John 2, 23 and 24. Because this is important for us to see. It says, now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, this is Jesus. You know, you got to think he was there. He was teaching and preaching and healing people. At the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. Many believed in his name. And we know that Simon believed in his name, but his heart still wasn't right. What was he looking at? Okay. Many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. 
but, here's the word but again, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and he did not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man, meaning he knew what was in their heart. And it's the same thing we're seeing going on with Simon. They believed on him in his name when they saw the miracles he did. But Jesus did not commit. Now, what does commit mean? It means credit, trust, put trust in or with. Because commit and believe in Greek are one of the same. It's like interchangeable. They believed in his name, but he knew. And he, he knew what was in man. So he didn't believe their hearts were right. He knew. Because he knew all men. He knew that they weren't true believers like Simon. They looked only at the miracles he did. Believed in his name, looking at the miracles he did. Not seeing the miracles are of God. To bring you back unto God. Eyes to see, ears to hear. Looking to the one who has all power. Not at the power itself that shows you him. <laughs> that shows you the truth of who he is. That he created you and made you in the likeness of him. We must, not, we must not only know the plan. We must also know the man of God. The man. The true God. Which is Jesus Christ. Because God is a spirit. And when we understand that Jesus Christ was the fullness of his spirit in the flesh. We look at the man of God. According to the flesh, right? We're told that over and over in the word. Spiritual truth and revelation. How does the spirit of God live on the inside of you? This is what he's saying, that you believe on his name. But do you believe in the truth? The miracles are sent to turn you back to God. So you see the truth and turn unto him, not stay focused on these miracles, trying to buy them or chasing them or chasing wrong ones who these soothsayers and magicians and these tarot card readers are doing all this stuff for you. I'll show you my faith by my works. Amen. So remember the devil also believes and trembles. The Bible says he believes and trembles. Do we not? And we seek these things. We've got to start opening our eyes as we draw closer and look at the times around us. There is a superficial faith that never comes and bows the knee to Jesus Christ. There is a superficial faith because Simon clearly shows us there he did not bow the knee to the truth of Jesus Christ. He wanted the power and tried to buy it. He believed in the name, but it was a superficial faith. He never made Jesus Christ his Lord and many today deny him, fear speaking his name. They follow and listen to people who don't know him. The scripture also says that many misrepresent him. They don't understand him and they don't know there is spirituality. I mean, this is talked about all over the TVs and the news and everything that spirituality is gaining over doctrine. Well, what is doctrine? Doctrine simply means the truth. The divine truth. And how is spirituality gaining over doctrine? Well, the devil is a spirit. Think on, think on that for a minute. How's he doing it? How are these people? Were, they were bewitched. By this false spirituality misleading them. So many believe in, a, in, in astrology or in reincarnation, but they don't believe in the only way that God sent forth. It's through Jesus Christ alone. Is man saved? We're told that in the word. He heals you. He doesn't just mislead you and try to give you a half-truth and tell you something that the spiritual realm knows of somebody that's already passed on who's in heaven or tell you that somebody's about to come into your life or whatever it is these tarot card readers do that bewitch the people or the astrologers and the magicians showing you 
miracle signs and wonders, putting a quarter into a bottle, or somehow putting a, 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 a knife through their arm. Is that healing? Is that the true power of God? Is that the true spirit of God? No. Think about it. It's there to bewitch you, to get you to follow it. If we believe and know there's a supernatural, then we know that these supernatural powers are at work in the earth, that these people are doing these things. And the whole city of Samaria was bewitched by Simon and the miracles and wonders he did. We've got to start opening our eyes and see the truth. Because it's through Jesus Christ alone that man is saved. There's many religions that, that they just believe in, in parts of the Bible and they create religion from portions of it. Like the reincarnation and then they've made this whole religion about it and the spiritual. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. We have to look at the whole truth and not the half truths and be bewitched by these things that are going on. It's about a relationship with our Father. That's what Jesus Christ died for. I mean, to show us the truth so we can come back into Him and we can commune with Him and have that relationship and we're not bewitched and fear in, in following these lies and so that we can have eternity with Him. Because many, many are spiritual today, but it's not rooted in the faith of the only one who can save you. The only one who is the Savior. There's one God, one Savior. Only He can do it. And it's through Jesus Christ. He laid down His life for us. So we see the truth. So we're not bewitched any longer like the city of Samaria was. They believed this man, Simon, had the power of God. What do you think is going to come soon? <laughs> Many are going to be bewitched because they're going to see great signs, miracles, and wonders going on. They're not going to understand it because they don't understand the true word of God. Because they haven't, they believe in Jesus Christ. But they've followed miracle signs and wonders. And they don't have that true relationship. They haven't bowed the knee to the one and only God, our Savior. The one and only God looking unto him. He's the author and finisher of our faith, he says. Author and finisher. He sets us free. He sets us free. He sets us free from half-truths. He sets us free from the lies of the enemy. He sets us free from sickness and disease. He sets us free from fear, from guilt, from condemnation from false teachings, false religions. He gave us truth so then we can try it when these spirits and these lies come and you start seeing these supernatural things happening in the natural so you don't follow them falsely, being deceived. He brings us back to the truth. This brings us back to the truth. Because when Jesus Christ comes, he says, all will see me. I will come in the clouds. All will see. So if you're seeing a miracle sign or a wonder going on here in the natural, don't follow it. Because the enemy is coming with great miracle signs and wonders, it says in Revelations. Great. And many will be deceived. Because they're going to be looking at the miracles the signs, and the wonders that he's doing. But when Jesus Christ comes, he says, all will be healed. In a moment's time, in the twinkling of an eye, all will be changed. Don't look unto the signs and those things that are brought forth to deceive you. We have to know the truth. We have to have that relationship with our Father because he will show us all things. That's what this is for. And then his Holy Spirit when you receive the Holy Ghost, it guides you to all truths. Not partial and half truths as your, these astrologers and things are doing. He brings us back to the truth so we can have that relationship. That's what we were created for. God is love. To have love and have that relationship. 
with our Father and spend eternity in heaven with Him. All we have to do is believe and look back unto Him. Follow His word. Just listen to Him. He knows what's best for us. It's obvious when we look at humanity and we look around the world, do we know what's best for us? Do we do what's best for us? No. We're gainsaying, backsliding, backbiters, harmers of each other and ourselves. He loves us more than we love ourselves. We have to get back to God, the one true love, our first love. If we do, he tells us he'll heal your nations. I mean, the truth is in the word. He says it's alive. It's quick, dividing asunder, even to the bone marrow. When you get it on the inside of you and you see and know the truth, you're not going to be deceived when these miracle signs and supernatural wonders, you know, because there's many that deny God and deny that there's demonic powers and things going on. And they look at these magicians in amazement. I don't believe that. He just put a quarter in a bottle right in front of me with the, with the, the holes this big and the quarters this big. How did he do that? Think about it. It's supernatural because there is a God and his word is true. That whole city was bewitched until the revival came in the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of our one and only Savior. Don't be bewitched. Don't follow lying sorcerers. We've got to be sober, sober-minded, vigilant, understanding the truth of his word. Don't deny him to any man. Any man. Eternity is real. Supernatural is real. When you see all these magicians and things on TV and these things that you're looking at, that is real. Because supernatural is real. That's the point. So many people don't know the truth, so they follow it because they don't understand. We've got to start looking back to God and to the truth. We have to stand in Christ and in Christ alone because that is the only name for men to call on to be saved. It's the only name for men to call on to be saved. He says, seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's what the word of God tells us. Seek him. Knock. Knock. Take time. Get in the, walk into the word. Open the door and get in the word. Knock on it. Seek his face. So you see and know the truth. Because there is eternity, there is a God. He will show you and you will see it. You will see the truth and you will shout it from the rooftops of his temple, which we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of God and we will shout it from the rooftops that Jesus Christ saves. He heals. He doesn't just bewitch you with some magic trick or with a half truth. He heals you. He delivers you. He is our salvation. And we have eternity through him. So don't look at the signs as this Simon did because his heart wasn't right with God. He had no lot or portion. Do you want, I mean, do we want no lot or portion in eternity because we follow these false things and seek to be God instead of the truth? We've got to open our eyes. We've got to be sober-minded. We've got to speak the truth. We cannot hide back in this box of fear. Afraid to speak his name? Our Savior? Who set us free from the lies of the enemy? Who said, you are free. I've forgiven past, present, future sins. You, I give joy. I give my peace. I want you to dance and sing. I want you to enjoy this earth and the things that I've given you. I want you to have love. I've put that desire on the inside of you because I am love. I don't want you to sit in misery. I don't want you to sit controlled by lies and fear and guilt and the enemy. 
You know, I was talking to my friend the other day. He, was, he chases money all the time. Oh, if I get a... Don't be a money chaser because then all you're doing is chasing money. It's the same thing. Don't be a signs and wonder chaser because then you're chasing that. And you miss God. You miss the joy and the peace and the love that he has for you and the, the things he wants you to experience. Because he didn't give you that flesh for no reason. But he didn't give you it to abuse it or to allow somebody else to abuse it or to allow somebody else to oppress it or oppress you. We have to get back to God and into the truth because Jesus Christ is the only one who gives it to us. And if we're not walking in it, we're going to allow these things to bewitch us, to trick us. We're going to allow it to condemn us. We're going to allow it to guilt us. And we're going to allow all these things to go on. So I'm going to read Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 to you guys. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. It is the word of faith that we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart. Because we just seen that. He believed in what he saw and in things, but he didn't believe in his heart. He was only seeking to be God, as God. The very first temptation, trying to climb up the knowledge of good and evil. But now it's revealed to us because we know there's good and evil. We know we can see it all around us. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and it's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, God loves us. He created us because he is love. He wants us to know the truth. He doesn't want us to be bewitched. And due to sins of the forefathers, and if you look back at all of this, this is how this blindness came, and this is how it's gone down from generation to generation, just like the city of Samaria. They were bewitched, the whole city, from these sorceries and things that have gone on for so long. But he says, I've given you the truth. I sent my son to die for you because I love you, that I forgive you. I want you to have my peace and my joy. Stop listening to the accuser of the brethren. Get in my words. Seek me. Believe in thine heart. Trust in me. So, so if you believe and, and you've never had that experience or, or you just want to ask the Lord to come into your heart today or, or if you have and you just want to renew that, I'm going to say the salvation prayer here and just know that God loves you. That he's calling you, he's saying, I've forgiven you already. Just turn back unto me. Seek me. Amen? So let's say the salvation prayer and we'll close it up here. Um, and just bow your head and open your heart. That's all he wants you to do is just open your heart to him. So you can see and know him. So you know you have grace. Amen? So let's say the salvation prayer. Just repeat after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I do believe that Jesus died for me and that he rose again on the third day, now sitting at your right hand, interceding for me. Come into my heart, Lord. Guide me. I thank you for your grace, Father. I thank you for your truth. Work in me, Lord, so I may not be deceived by any lie of the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's that simple. He just wants us to commune with our heart, just that relationship and talking to him and not seeking after all these things he created in, 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 the, in the miracles and signs and wonders because the supernatural is real and the enemy is going to use it to try and deceive us but those who know God those who know the truth are not going to look to those signs and wonders they're going to keep their eyes on him not on the signs and wonders following them do you see that 
So I pray you got something out of this today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Know that his word never comes back void. So, so no matter when you say the prayer, uh, just know that God's Holy Spirit, it, it, it'll move. He said it never, ever comes back void, you guys. I encourage you to follow along with the blog at keepingfaithinyourears.com. Uh, I encourage you to go to jamforjesus.org and keep up on revivals and events and things that are going on. Um, to, to donate, if the Lord moves on your heart, just pray about it and, and let the Lord move. And, and we will make sure that it goes where, uh, right to where it should because we are totally nonprofit here. We also as well put in as whatever the Lord gives us because that's what it's about. We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. So keep my grandfather, Evangelist Roy Castro, lifted up in your prayers. Pray for me. He says to pray for each other. Pray for all saints. We'll pray for you guys. Keep the station lifted up in your prayers. I know the Lord's moving and we just trust in his time as he lifts this station so that many are reached, so that the masses are reached with the truth of God's word and not deceived. Amen. So thank you guys for joining me. This is Faith and Hope with Charity. We're live here every Friday at noon on All Points TV. God bless. I love every single one of you guys. Pray, stay in the word, seek him. You can always call me if you need prayer or my grandfather. I gave you the numbers earlier in the show. And we will see you guys live next week here on All Points TV. God bless.